That's right. Here at Mowers and Blowers, we push them into the garage and they come out driving. Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Another super hot day. It's been almost two weeks since we've had any rain and the lawn is all shriveling up to the hell. Um, so I've had to water it a couple of times a day. If you guys are experiencing that, you should be doing it too. Grass needs water. Uh, so do I, you know. Um, so today the project is going to come to an end, I believe, or I hope. This is the Franken Tractor Nightmare, probably episode 10 or 11, I forget, you know. Um, but we've done quite a lot to this tractor since we first got it as a carcass from Nick from Medford. Uh, yesterday, I painted the whole thing sunrise red as in accordance to the votes from my wonderful subscribers. And once again, thank you very much to all the silent watchers. Silent watchers are guys that have probably always followed the channel, have always subscribed, but they watch it on their big screen or they just don't comment, you know. But some of those guys did take some time to put in their vote. So thank you for that because almost half of the votes were from guys that were silent watchers, you know. So welcome to commenting. Wasn't too bad, right? Uh, anyway, so I got this muffler yesterday from my friend Bobby and Larry. Um, it's not as easy as I thought I was going to just get it and put it on, you know. It's in really good condition with the exception of this top bracket here that mounts to the muffler itself, right? Um, it looks like it was jarred or hit or somebody tried to pry it off or something. Uh, and the top part of the muffler is cracked along this bracket that's, you know, factory welded on there. So it's like it was hit on this side. So it, the bracket pulled off of the top of the muffler and with it came like a irregular shaped piece that's really close to the hole which could get really complicated you know what I mean so um, yesterday when I picked it up from Bobby the the pipe itself right it fit really loosely into the hole and I thought maybe it might have something to do with the part that was cracked maybe it you know moved it or something like that but then uh, I just mocked it up. I'll show you. You guys know what I mean by mocked up. But anyway, let me get you a closer view of the condition of the current muffler. So as you can see, the hole is here. The crack is not quite at where the pipe goes in, which is good, right? But I fear that when this pulled up, it might have bent that a little bit. So um, I might try to just take this lip and try to pull it inwards a little so it's not so so um, loose. Uh, I think also that when this muffler heats up, the metal expands, right? So that it could be even looser. Um, so this irregular shaped crack, you know, it's missing, right? And the bracket is somewhat pulled up, you see? If you look at it this way, you could see that it's pulled up so I'm gonna take like a clamp right and clamp it this part down you know like that so I'm gonna put a bead eventually through here this looks good maybe a bead right there so that there's no exhaust leaks and what I'm gonna do is because this is so irregular right I'm gonna have to find a piece of metal I mean, how can you find a piece of metal that's exactly like that? You know what I mean? It would be difficult. So this is what I was thinking. I found this metal bracket. I mean, I have a lot of metal pieces in the back somewhere, but they're all super thick, you know, and I don't really need it that thick. There are some that are super thin, too, uh, way thinner th than this, like sheet metal. But you almost want to kind of have it somewhat thick. To, so that the muffler will last. You know, if it's too thin, it'll eventually just rust and there's a hole, you know. So this one's pretty strong. I mean, you can't even bend it with your hands, you know. Um, and it doesn't seem that thick, but it's it's strong, you know. You, you, you're using the, I'm using a lot of force just to bend this like that, you know. 
So what I'm thinking is, I'm going to take my cutter grinder and just cut a straight line along this, along this weld there. Just cut a straight line, right? And at least because it's a straight line, I can match it up like this. See? So I'm going to cut like here and here, right? Nice little rectangle. And then sort of shape the round part right here. And then weld it. First, the cutting. So now I'm going to cut that piece. That's pretty good. Gotta get that piece out though. Because that would totally suck if it would make that noise. Oh, I can't even see it now. Where could it have gone? I have to find it. I have to find it. And I'm gonna cut this piece to size. See, I told you, this thing is pretty strong. Uh, thanks to Nate Wagner for this vise. You see how how often I'm using it now? I never used to use a vise, but then now you got it, you use it. Hmm. Just sticking up like that's gonna get in the way. Guess I'll reverse it. gonna say Ooh, it's hot I'm gonna try to line this up and draw like where I need to cut you know use the sledgehammer bang this flat this isn't exactly straight over here but it's close enough to weld so I'm looking at where the crack ends which is right there and just guesstimating, really. So I'm just going to cut this piece off right there. Right in the middle of that black line. Try to, at least. I don't know how I'm going to do it with a, a thing like that, you know.
not bad as you can see it's not quite perfect you know I think I might have done a little bit too much because you could see the hole there and also this part here is in the way see see I'm gonna have to grind a little bit more over here Let's see if that's better. Okay, so that clears, but look, I've got that hole there. And if I, no, wait a minute. If I push it down more, it fills a hole better. I think I'm going to have to bang it a little. And it looks like I still need to take a little bit off here because this is going to get in the way of the muffler. There you go. I think that'll do because this clears it completely. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put tack welds on each corner, right? And then uh, put a clamp on here to push this down. Actually, I put the clamp on here now and push it down. There we go. So that's pushed down. This part's lined up. Got my piece over here. And let's go uh let's go do some tack welding. Okay, so I'm ready to tack. I'm gonna tack one right here. shouldn't really touch it with my hands, right? Why don't you use a clamp, Henry? I don't have any more. That's the one I got. Too bad for you, Henry. Okay, now I'm just going to go nuts.
Hey, hey, hey. So I put everything back together. As you saw from time lapse, I took all the masking off. I put some silicone on the foot pads because the tabs were broken. So silicone will just permanently mount these pads on here, right? Um, I noticed that the uh, right rear tire was completely flat. So I put some um, ATF in there, pumped it up, and it was just pouring out of a big crack. It had a huge crack on the side, you know, where the thing has been sitting for a while flat. It builds a crack on the side, and that was just not sealable. So uh, I chucked that wheel, and uh, I went to the shed in the back, and uh, I got those old Toro rear wheels, the one that I found in Northport on the street, uh, the one that Larry passed up, the one that I used the... Uh, 13.5 flathead engine on the MTD yard machines that I sold. So I still had a set of Toro wheels on there. They're pretty dry rotted, but they hold air, surprisingly. Uh, anyway, so I got them on here. They both, uh, they both hold air pretty well. And uh, I grinded the inner wheel, the rim, because it was rusty and had old paint and stuff. And then I painted it black. You know, this uh, tractor looks exactly like that red one that I just uh, sold, you know, for $500, the LT-1000 red one, the one that I also had Sunrise Red. Now that I look at it, yes, it looks great, but it looks exactly like the one that I just sold, you know? So maybe I should have painted it another color. You know, maybe I should have tried, like, uh, Yeller. Maybe I should have tried Yeller. I won't doubt you again there, Sam. I should have done Yeller. Yeller would have probably came out nice. Anyway, shout out to Robert Smitta from Fort Plain, New York. He bought three of my new holographic stickers. You guys saw those stickers from last week. They look pretty damn good. You know what I'm saying? It's the rounded kind of sticker with me on it. Um, and it has a Lucas Oil thing. But look. It's very cool. It's hologram. Well, holographic, you know. It's got that look on it where it's... It's very cool. I like it a lot. But these were almost three times more expensive than my regular ones. But, uh, I don't know. Uh, I like them a lot, though. They look cool, no? Yeah. I only had 12 of them, so he bought three. Uh, I had a lot of people who who said that they really liked those stickers. And I really like those stickers too. They're really badass. But uh, I paid about three times as much for it uh, as I did the regular stickers. So I was thinking about charging three times more. But that wouldn't be fair to you guys. So uh, I just raised it a buck. Um, so if you guys want to buy my new holographic stickers, right, I only listed them for five bucks. I mean, uh, uh, I'll... I lose a little bit of money, but I'd, I'd rather get out the stickers. You know what I mean? Uh, I'd rather you guys have them. Uh, anyway, keep the donations coming in. That'll make up for the uh, loss. But uh, I'm going to try to look for a better deal. Sometimes if you buy a lot, right, they'll give me a discount on it. So uh, maybe I'll order like 50 more because they seem like everybody wants them now. You know, uh, and they're, they are nice stickers. I mean, really, it brings out the colors in the logo. Also, shout out to Steven Artis from Ontario, Canada. It'll probably take a few months for the stickers to get to you, but he bought five stickers last night via eBay, but it wouldn't go through through eBay because I don't accept any orders from other countries because customs, it's a pain in the butt, and not only that, I told him, the last person I, I sent them to, uh, Dan Charbonneau, he still hasn't got them yet. It's been over a month. So I don't know what the story is with uh, the shipping to Canada from the US. I mean. Uh, I mean, it's not like it's in Russia or China or something. And even China, you eventually get them. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, Stephen, if you're watching, man, your five stickers are on the way. I don't know how long it's going to take to get there. One month, two months, whatever. But let me know when you get them. And thanks a lot for supporting the channel. Um, so, look. We got the muffler figured out, right? Let's try. Oh, boy, oh, boy. I haven't started this baby up uh, since um, we took it apart and started painting it, you know? So uh, I'm a little nervous, obviously. So here we go. Let's, uh, I'm just going to start her up. Start her up!
Wow, sounds great. Doesn't sound like there's any exhaust leaks. Got a little bit of smoke coming out of that muffler. I know it's not the engine, it's gotta be the muffler. We'll let that burn off a little bit. So how about it? When I got this tractor from Nick from Medford, you guys saw it was just a carcass, no engine, and um, the front end was completely disheveled. So we changed the front end on this. We changed the height adjuster for the mower deck, the two side panels. We took apart the mower deck also, changed the spindles, the nuts, the shaft, the pulleys, Got a new belt from Bobby and Larry, who also gave me a muffler, which I welded today. I got a seat from my uh, shed. We put it on along with another bracket. Put a new battery in there. We repainted this uh, from green to sunrise red, thanks to the poll that you guys participated in. Special thanks to all the silent watchers who took the time to vote. Thank you very much. Uh, we got those pads back on there, right? Painted the side panels as well. Swapped out the rear wheels, and uh, we did pretty much everything there was that there is to do with this thing. As you know, the engine is also rebuilt for this project. Uh, I took five engine blocks that I had that were blown and made one good engine. Seems to run really well, too. Took off the green John Deere bezel off the engine cover and painted it sunrise red so that it matches. Headlights work. Can you believe it, man? Uh, everything uh, about this... It makes me feel good because I never thought that I could build a tractor from scratch. You know, it was an interesting project. So uh, kudos to Nick from Medford who said, Hey, you know, that, that would make a really good video if you can turn that into something. And thanks to you guys for supporting me. Uh, we have this <laughs> Sunrise Red tractor and it looks fantastic. Uh, it runs, drives, mows, uh, and it looks really nice. Um, I won't do it again though. It was a lot of work and it occupied about 10 days of my life. You know what I mean? So um, there's something to be said about that. Um, thank you guys very much for watching. We hope uh, that you continue watching and uh, I'm up to 5,000 subscribers very soon and thank you very much for your support. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers.
and blowers.